Welcome. Um, so this morning, my beautiful guests, all beautiful ladies, are Twinny, who's currently um, got her new album out, which is Hollywood Gypsy. Amazing record. And uh, so she's going to be sharing her info on what's going on with that kind of like situation in lockdown. Fiona Bevan also has got her own album out, which is Wild Angels and Sweet Demons. And she's written for people like Tom Walker and Louis Cabaldi. So this will be Hi. great because we'll be able to hear her perspective as from both sides um, of the story. And then we've got Paulina over in um, Russia who lives in LA and London as well. And she's featured on epic artists like Eminem. She's had huge hits in her own right, probably numerous number ones in dance, um, massive single book of love. And she's got a brand new kind of um, project, which I would say is very forward thinking called Ken uh, Contessa. So hi ladies. Hi. Um, who shall we pick first? <laughs> okay, Paulina. Tell us what's, how's lockdown? Because obviously you live in LA and London normally and you've gone back to Russia to be in lockdown. So how's yeah, actually, it? Um, well, yeah, normally I'm in LA and I came to Moscow for, um, for some video videotaping I had to do and my family lives here. So the whole thing kind of happened uh, while I was here. And I decided, you know, I, I, I don't really get to normally spend that much time with my family because I've been in a state, in a state since I was 16 and they've been here. So I decided why just not to take this time and uh, slow down for once and, and just spend this time with family. Because even when I'm in Moscow, usually I'm just running around doing shows or doing, you know, I mean, you've done me. huge makeup campaigns and everything, Vogue. I mean, you are like out there, you're like mega, mega, mega star. And so that later on, I'd love to come back to is, you know, having careers in different countries, because I think this is probably relevant for, for all of us, really. Um, but we're, anyway, we're really pleased to have you here. Fiona, how are you this morning? Hi. Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. I'm um, streaming from our venue which we've built inside our house um, so welcome to our little velvet room <laughs> I, to say yeah. something. I wanted to come to the party like match so I figured I might just wrap <laughs> myself later on because I'm feeling a little bit like sacking <laughs> in the room oh. <laughs> it's a mix of I know it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah it's kind of ridiculous this will be something we yeah. can chat about like um how you're coping in lockdown and, and with live gigs. And I know yeah. you're probably feeling the same way. Twinny, records out at the moment, literally, isn't it? So how's that going in lockdown? Two weeks ago on Friday. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty well, all things considering um, that I can't promote it. Um, got record of the week at Radio 2. Um, yeah, and it's had some support in, from my American label, obviously over there from editorial and Spotify and stuff. So yeah, I mean, it just, it, it sucks that I can't obviously play live, you know, as an artist, I'm sure that all of you girls will understand that feeling we get such a buzz out of it. There's nothing like it. So that's unfortunate, but at least um, by the time I tour, um, touch wood in November, everybody will know the words to the song. So that's a plus. <laughs> that's a very good point actually. So are you all, uh, I mean, I haven't done any live gigs, but I'm not like you guys. I'm more like on the songwriter side. Are you all doing gigs, like streaming ones? Well, I'm definitely not doing gigs as good as um, Fiona in that. <laughs> but minimal Anyone in the is, right? I, I did one last night for um, a country radio station, which was pretty fun. Um, you know, I, it's different for me, which has been really cool because I don't really normally play by myself. I do, I can, but um, I've only ever experienced going on tour with, you know, my band. So it's really pushed me to not rely on anyone, which has been a really great uh, thing. Um, I get really nervous on the lives for some reason. It's just yeah. it's so weird when you're like, looking at a screen i suppose because you're just relying on comments back and my internet as you might discover on this call is really shoddy at times so i'm like are we there are we in 
Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? No, okay, cool. Which we had some technical issues last night because technology hates me. But yeah, I mean, it, it's good to connect with the fans. I feel like I've been more connected to my fans more than ever. And they've been so lovely and so oh. supportive. Um, I feel because everybody's in the same boat and everybody needs music right now. Including I, think, me. I think the thing is, we, we discussed this um, just about writing sessions last week, that, that when you're in a Zoom session or something, there's, for some reason, it doesn't matter if you've got the bubbliest personalities on camera, you're lacking that human element. It's really, it's really tough yeah. to do. Yeah. So I can imagine when yeah. you're doing gigs live online, it's kind of going to cause a little bit of a, you know, it's going to be harder to do. But Fiona, obviously, clearly you are killing this. <laughs> <laughs> Was this room oh, yeah. before lockdown? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we're very lucky because I'm in, I'm very lucky to be in lockdown with a singer songwriter called Adam Beatty and a and a cinematographer called Simon Minette. So together, the three of us have made this, which is kind of like probably something we were all dreaming about for a long time, anyway. And I suppose you know, out like in times like in what what did they say? Um, necessity is the mother of invention it's like in desperate times you end up doing these crazy things to sort of like work out I mean none of us know what is going on we don't know when we'll be able to tour again yeah so fingers crossed November it will all be back to normal but in the meantime you know we had dates in the diary I was supposed to be doing Cadogan Hall and Adam's supposed to be releasing his album and you know so so we're just making it up as we go along and yeah the gigs have been really really weird and it is nerve wracking. It's oddly stressful and nerve wracking, but like actually now that we've been doing it every week, it's become like a really beautiful thing, which people feel very like emotionally connected to. And we're getting really lovely comments because a lot of people are completely on their own. So it's this little window. And then, you know, we're seeing the comments as we're doing the gig and, um, and sort of replying as we go you know verbally to the written comments and stuff so like it's really beautiful it's very interesting yeah, who so knew we were going to be doing this I mentioned isn't it and, and yeah what you're saying is so true there we have to be almost really resourceful right now and it's like applying our creativity in in a different facet to try and to kind of figure out what we're going to do during lockdown um so Pauline, have you, have you done any live gigs or are you just like, no, I'm waiting? <laughs> no, for me, it's, it's also very different because I'm so used to doing really big festivals with DJs and, and usually I've got dancers and production. And so for me, it's actually, I've played really big shows like Ultra Music Festival, it's like 100,000 people. Uh, and for me, doing intimate shows or going live, it's like, I'm so scared of that. <laughs> uh, for some reason, for me, it feels like you're really bare. And I think, but that's the world that we live in in is like your um we i'm learning to to kind of share because i grew up in a time when artists were idols and it was mystic and mystery and i was always drawn to that so for me exposing myself as i'm brushing my teeth is really hard so kind of <laughs> living in that world so for me i created this um alter ego contessa which is my side project indie project and it's like this character that I can live it but I think it's the most sincere I can be because under this sort of in, in this alter ego I'm actually I can be exactly you know and show like the real depth of, of so I kind of really kind of locked you know because I'm usually so on in LA and you like writing sessions and you go 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 and you do so for me um this project because it's more than a show it's more kind of like the story to it so I'm writing a script so I decided okay, I'm just gonna I never have time to really sit down and think about it because you always as an artist of songwriter you guys know it's it's there's always something going on and so it's been a very interesting time because I've really allowed myself to um just take the time and deconstruct just my life my just you know just give myself a minute and also to work on this project but I've done a few writing sessions I've done a few piano moments a few videos uh where I just put like sing a cover of a song I like on the piano and yeah it's, it's been it's been very interesting I feel more connected I, I agree with you I, I feel is more much more of a connection with fans and just friends and just people you haven't talked to in years I think everyone's been checking on each other so it's been really nice in that sense I think um very quickly if you're going to do the toothpaste it could be the moment that Paulina and I were in Italy and we brought <laughs> some toothpaste who had the toothpaste and it was blue 
and it made your whole mouth blue and the parent was cleaning our teeth and we, it. we were on a writing camp in Italy. I do know. We flew home, we were nearly <laughs> choking on this toothpaste because we were laughing so much because we looked like we'd been smurfed. But it was um, <laughs> toothpaste. It, was it actually it, toothpaste? I don't know what it was. Like. It was like a Colgate one or something, but it was so, it was literally like blue and foam, and we, we were killing ourselves laughing. I mean, you can imagine coming out of a session and then cleaning your teeth and just being already a bit hyper. But it's like I think, um, I, I think one thing that's becoming very the, the things that have become so obvious to me right now is the fact that one, as women in music, we're normally like charging around at a million miles an hour, like onto the next session, next song, gig promo, blah, 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 thinking, da, 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 traveling. I mean, we've got all of that and gigs, obviously, for you guys thrown into the bag. But where we're now, we've had time to stop and breathe. And I think the world is having that as well. It's, it's the most weirdest, bizarre in time era, really, isn't it, when you think about it? But I think in some ways, um, having this moment to breathe and stop is going to be beneficial to us all. So I'm curious to know, what do you think that that is going to change? In your in your career going forwards, um, who wants to go first? Twinny, you go first. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, at, at first, I'll be honest with you. I mean, maybe my situation is different because I had an album coming out, and I don't think I've ever been as busy. I mean, I'm constantly on my phone anyway, but that was like a different level. Um, but I think like it's pushed me to be like resourceful I think and like you know I, I'll come out of this probably a better person I hope I'm always trying to be a better person but um a better musician you know I've actually because we're always go 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 all the time I never really get to just sit by myself and you know before I professionally started writing with other people I always used to write by myself and it's so funny having this time to actually right by myself because I was so good at it before but I think then when you go into sessions you rely people take different roles and then sometimes you don't get to say what you really want to say um I mean if you know me then that's probably doesn't we've written and Fiona we've written um I generally do know what I want to say but um, it's just been nice to be able to create without feeling guilty is the biggest thing for me because I always feel like you know oh well that person's doing that and I need to like get ahead of the game so I'm a night owl and I'll probably try to tick a load of things off so I can do some you know some ahead of the game when actually sometimes that's not that's not productive that's not right like you need time to you know rest there's that brilliant quote where it says about an arrow in order to shoot forward you have to pull it back and I feel like that's what I'm doing now and I probably wouldn't have got this time to write like I'm in the middle of writing for my second album and we're doing an EP in America and I've probably got more control of like what I actually want to say because I've got time to think about it so yeah um, that's really good to know it is interesting isn't it just to see how other people are coping with this what about you Fiona are you kind of like are you doing the same? Well, yeah. And I mean, I've spent the last sort of four or five years writing a lot with and for other people. And actually, during this lockdown, I've really zoned in on writing more on my own for myself. And also, I'm trying to get better at production. So I'm, so I'm up there in front of a laptop, you know, like playing in violin parts and chopping them up and reversing them and putting in beats and stuff. I'm just like basically having the best time of my life if it wasn't for this global pandemic. I mean, so, so I'm sure, so there is going to be a new album coming out of this, but I think Twinny's right. It's like, actually, we're all just running around headless, trying to kind of keep up with, with everybody else or ourselves or, and a lot of that comes from anxiety about falling behind or like, you know, not being on top or whatever it is. And actually we only ever see like the fruits of everybody else's labor. We don't see the quiet reflective times when things get made. Sometimes, you know, we don't see how sometimes a massive hit song takes three weeks to write with everybody chipping away or whatever, you know, we just see the end result and it's like da da all the time. And I think it is really very good for everybody's mental health to have this moment to kind of take a breath and think, actually, what do I want to make and why? And who am I and what we all doing? And but having said that, I think 
this time is probably quite hard on everyone's mental health as well. We'll probably talk about that a bit more in a minute as well, can't yeah, we? Yeah, for sure. We've but, got um, that definitely pinned on it. I think, I think um, you know, I wanted to share something with you ladies. Obviously, I've been doing this for a few, <laughs> few years. <laughs> Um, but it's like, I felt like this, this has been such a blessing for me this moment. And even though I had coronavirus and it was horrendous and I did honestly think I was going to die at one point, it was so bad. Um, but I think for me, I was, I, I've always believed you should be your best you because you'll only be a second rate someone else as a songwriter. Cause I know I fell into that trap when I was younger, I was trying to be, whether it was Priscilla Renee or Sear or whatever. I think we're all guilty of that. I was Diane Warren for many years when I first started as well. But I think also when we're so busy and so working, I think it's like a, a snowball. You just get in it and then you can't get out of it and you're just going and it's getting yeah. faster and faster. And I think for me, if I look back on the few months of my sessions, I don't feel I was actually really bringing much to the table. I think I was sitting in the room and I was a battery that was just absolutely drained. Getting on reserve. Oh God, that'll be my dad. <laughs> Running on reserve. <laughs> Are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> Running on reserve. I'm going to stop that in a minute. Running on reserve and then, oh my gosh, sorry. Running on reserve and then, you know, picking it up again, but in, until I burnt again. But what this has done, I went through a moment, this is going to ring for ages, it's my dad, sorry. He'd just be like, I'm not answering. But I think, the, <laughs> sorry, sorry. The thing Good is, old landline. I know, you can't stop it though. Who has a landline anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so great. But, but it's real. It's real. But the thing is, um, what I have discovered from this is, I've, where I've stopped, I wasn't having ideas for so long come into my head or lyric ideas. And in the last literally three days, I've had melodies popping into my head, lyric ideas popping into my head, which I haven't had for months. And it's yeah. been a massive reset for me as a creative. And I don't know if, Paulina, are you feeling that? Are you, are you still in that moment? I so agree because I think, you know, you used to be in LA and we met in LA doing, you know, doing, doing sessions and especially being in a, in a town like LA, in a city like LA, where it's like this rut, you, you run, run, run as sessions and as this competition and you're just kind of in it to be in it sometimes in a race. And I do think sometimes I, it's, it's gotten so fast and the world has gotten so fast. And I've realized yeah. these last few weeks when it's like you actually now you can hear your thoughts and I, I've had moments when I'm actually truly inspired and I get like inspiration and ideas and because there's space in your head because yeah. otherwise you're you're kind of you're doing a good job sometimes you have bad sessions you have good sessions and you sometimes you suck you know you have to suck it all your finger like the songs are just feel you know it's forced so I think um, in, in a sense, it's kind of gone back to when like you, Rolling Stones used to take three months, go the fuck to the countryside and make an album. And I feel like this is forcing us. And it's been also, I think, having online sessions because, you know, people send back and forth ideas. It's taking the pressure out of it. So you can like, you can, there's not this like expectation that, like, oh, you have to be yeah, now. Yeah, 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 get it cut. Yeah. Um, for people watching who don't know, most of us here will be able to validate this um, and agree with this. Is like we get to our sessions at 11, 12 o'clock. By like four o'clock, five o'clock, we're cutting the song, if not six o'clock, until it's done. And it's like, that's it. You know, mm. it's almost as good as a master, isn't it, as it gets. Yeah. Um, I mean, there might be some additional like production on it and it is, it's like a, a rat race kind of thing. But I, I, I don't know, I've learned from this that it isn't a rat race because we are, life is still going. It's running slower and everyone's still here and we're all doing the same. So it, it just goes to prove that it doesn't have to be that way. No, so I, wa I wanted to add to that because I think, um, you know, even in Nashville, like it can tend to be a lot worse than Double that. Sessions. And you've been, yeah. and I found that most of my co-writers, we've been doing Zoom sessions and they were like, you've got such a different energy about you because they know that I work so hard when I'm there because I only have a certain amount of time. So, you know, I used to think, oh, uh, quantity, like I just need to get, but really it's about quality. And they're like, you're so focused on like what you actually want to say. I, there's no pressure. And I think what's interesting for any artist or songwriters that are watching is like, I'm, if you know me, then I'm just go, go, go. I find it really hard to rest because I always feel like I haven't got to where I've 
got yet. But I missed, you know, when my album came out, if I'm being totally honest, it was like the biggest anti-climax climax Aww. ever. And maybe that I added because of the, you know, the time that we're in. But it was like, then it's out. And there was so much that I was like meticulous about, probably because it was my first album. And then it was like such a labor of love because I looked past the three back the three years and I was like, I probably didn't enjoy it as much as I should have done. So now going forward, the biggest lesson for me, and maybe this time is like, I'm, I'm not in competition with anybody else. I'm running my own race. The only person I'm competing against is myself. And I think as a songwriter, you're always trying to catch the next thing or what's cool, what's that, that sound as a producer. But the people that I've watched have success is the people, and Billie Eilish and uh, Phineas are a really good example. And you mentioned the Rolling Stones, that they took time. And it's that connection that you have with people. So you try and finish a song in like five hours. You may as, sometimes I walk out, I'm like, well, I may as well have not done that. So waste my time. I'm like, I don't feel passionate about the song, but taking time is like, you get it right. And um, they're, the, they're the things that connect eventually. If you're doing your own thing, if you're staying in your own lane, then eventually it's perseverance, this game, I think. Is Absolutely. You, it just connects. And that, that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned throughout this whole process, because it was totally new to me. I've been in the industry since I was four, but not necessarily music. I've done lots of different things, musical theater, been a back in dancer. And that to me, going through this label process, it's not, it kind of takes the fun out of doing music because you're on this all the time and you're having to like <laughs> at certain times and you're like, I'm, you know, now I'm, enjoying, I'm, I'm enjoying music. I'm inspired like you girls. It's just, I think it's really interesting to take that notion and, you know, when we're out of this to go, no, there's no pressure. A song will come when it's meant to come and that's, that's fine. Well, you're so. saying is 100% right, Twinny. I'm, I'm on the same page as you there. I mean, when you look at Max Martin, did you know he takes five to six weeks for each song? And do you know what? Yeah. How many women hit smash world hits does this man have? I mean, and that's, yeah. it is. Why are we in this hurry, 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 hurry? And I know myself, when you, li I, I actually get a little, not down, but a little feel, oh, when you leave a room and that song doesn't feel right and you know it's not great and it's not got any magic, it's kind of the biggest disappointing thing really, isn't it? It's, yeah, it, it, it can really kind of kill music for you. Yeah. It can really kill your love for it if you're sort of dragging yourself through it like that. But I suppose burnout is burnout. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. And there's a lot of it in the music industry and people have only just started talking about mental health in the music industry. And that's like... I mean, even the fact that we're having this conversation and sharing our experiences and stuff is a beautiful thing. And I hope actually after COVID's all gone away and things have gone back to normal, whatever that means, I hope that these things will actually continue because there are some beautiful connecting things that are going to come out of all of this that I think we're going to keep doing, you know? I mean, by the way, everyone, for those of us who are watching here who don't know, so Fiona and I actually sit on the songwriter committee of the Ivers Academy, who are very kindly hosting this today. And um, just, to, I think it's the 19th, which is Mental Health Week. We're going to be doing a really special episode to really focus in on those, um, that subject and to maybe try and bring some help for anyone who's needing it. So um, spread the word around. But yeah. Paulina, what about you? How, what are you, are you feeling about? What are you going to take away from this, this whole episode? I, I think for me, you know, and I agree with Twinny, I've, I've had some moments when um, records I've been a part of were, became number one or I was on a, on a Grammy winning album. And I remember also because I, I grew up in Moscow. So for me, it was such a long journey. You know, I didn't really speak English until I, I was 16. So for me to like be on a Grammy winning album with Eminem or having a number one in Germany, UK. So it's, but I, I always realized that that it didn't feel the way I thought it would. And it always struck me how, because usually by the time it, it, it's happening or you have this long run up to the single you're working on, the video or the album. And I realized it's really about the process. And there are some amazing, listen, some of my, like biggest songs are actually written in an hour and sometimes it just happens and it just, it just the magic is there, you walk out, it's done. And most of my biggest songs have actually happened. But there've been some songs that, that need time and, but I realized for myself, you know, I think there are kinds of artists and songwriters that just 
go in, nail it. They're kind of just like the one day like LA like hit wonders. And the, there are the more artistic, so I'm definitely much more artistic. I need time and I need to be comfortable because there've been sessions that are completely, you know, I would just psych myself out. It'd be a, a room full of big like writers, producers. And I would, I, I knew I would not do well, like, because I'm just too, I'm feeling right. a pressure. Too much pressure. So for me, I much more I've realized the process is actually very important for me. And I've realized my, my dad always says, he's an artist, it's really about the run up to the mountain. The mountain itself is empty and you'll realize it. And, and I've been like on the top of the little mountains and every time you get to one top, there's always the next Another mountain, one. the next mountain top. So and the people trying to really, on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know there's always it's so usually by the time that that success like hits you you're already kind of on to the next thing and you're like thinking so it's never really it's always just trying to catch up it's mm -hmm. I mean, a few people probably in this world are, are like exactly aligned like billy eilish or Dua Lipa. but um so for me i've realized that the process and enjoying the process and not thinking about the success but it's hard because our world is so dependent on success and now like so i think my friend said like you have to feel successful inside we as artists what we do that. every day being just an artist and, and trying to make a living of it that's already a success being an artist isn't like having a number one and being having massive success it's it's having a song that touches someone's heart. I mean, I just want to share something. Oh my God, I'm going to throw this out. <laughs> having, this is what my dad does. Sorry about this, everyone. <laughs> having, yes, oh, I love him, though, dearly. Oh God, look. I just pressed a million buttons. I've no idea what I did. <laughs> I think you should bring back the slow dance and the landlines. Victoria. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, what was I saying? I can't even remember. First of all, the journey is like the alchemist. We, we, we're so busy chasing that end goal. But the reality is, I was, oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to share something. And I think when a song, if it touches one person's life, then you have achieved something. We had a situation, now this one's going, we had a situation, I did a song with um, Rodney Jerkins, um, Brandy, um, called Departed right here. And a woman in America had, had given birth and she'd gone into a coma um, the minute she gave birth and it was really touch, her life was touch and go. But her family, for some reason, decided to pick our song as the song that they would sing in the room because the, the lady liked it. And they sang it to her daily, like repeatedly. And she actually ended up waking up to it and they contacted Rodney to share this story. And for me, I mean, it gives me goosebumps. That for me, there's been a couple like that moments. And for me, that's mm. worth more than any chart position, anything. Um, I think these are the little moments. So to anyone watching, I'm just saying that you don't need to have that number one. It's not necessarily about fame and success. Being a creative is, is getting your music out there. And it doesn't matter how many people, it's just, if it touches people, then it's doing what it's meant to do. Do you not? Yeah. yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. You know, like there's loads of stories like that though. Being an artist, it is like it's a lifestyle. And I don't I think if you could do something else, you would. I think the artists that are artists, like that's the only thing that they can do. That's their life. That's what they thrive off. And you know, I watched um I'm a massive fan of Brandy Carlisle and she only won a Grammy like last year. Yeah. I've been to see her yeah. at the Vine and she was, um, my friend Lucy Silvers was supporting her. And when I say her, she brought me to tears. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not an emotional person really like that. I go and see shows all the time. But she reduced me to tears. It was like watching Beyonce, like at that level. And it's so mm. interesting, like watching her because you can tell that she's done every dive bar every you know like where there's a hundred people watching and nobody knows her name and you know and it was truly inspiring and you it, you know you see on social media which i think is a great thing of like lizzo and you know um what's the the lead singer out of one republic i always forget his name Ryan Tedder, who's an yeah. amazing artist, had huge success. I remember him posting um, on social media about like, oh, I had a breakdown and I couldn't do this. And I'm thinking, wow, if that can happen to you, that can happen to anyone. anyone. I'm so yeah. much about the process and how it touches people. As artists, I don't think we ever appreciate 
our own music as much as the listener does. I'm sure Paul McCartney, you know, he was in an interview and he said, no, I just don't appreciate it the way somebody else does because I've lived it. And uh, Helena, when you were saying, like, we always feel like we're going again, it's probably because I've lived with this album. Some of this song, one of these songs is like seven years old. So I'm like, it right, I'm, I'm cracking. I'm, I want to get onto something new, but it is, it is about the process. And I think that's what, we forget you can't be defined by how many Grammys or awards you've got. They're, they're nice, but that's not really what it's about. I don't know why we do it. We do it because we have to do it. We, we, it's like cathartic getting all these things out that we're feeling really, isn't it? Mm. Picking yeah. subjects and doing that. Go on, feed I mean, I suppose the other thing is that like every, you know, since the dawn of time, every creative has always been, weighing up and struggling between that balance of creativity and you know just that pure joy and that pure thing with actually making a living and that's something that I bet a lot of people listening are going to want to ask us questions about how to actually make a living out of it and it is the toughest time <laughs> I've ever known <laughs> I mean it's something I talk about this a lot at the Islands Academy but I just retweeted this morning um if anybody wants to read a really good like breakdown of what's going on in the music industry right now I'd recommend reading the tweets by Tom Gray Tom Gray maybe we can give everyone a link but I've also put it on my Instagram and he's um Tom's it's great. just really good it's because it's very confusing I think you could put a link fee in the um chat box maybe oh yeah maybe I can put a link Okay, um, but basically, it's just a really well explained breakdown of what's going on with streaming income and why we're in this terrible situation where it's very hard to make a living. And I don't want to like go on about it for ages because we all talk about it a lot. But it's very important to me. So to, for me, being part of the Ivers Academy has really like helped me so much because it's given me this place where I've got my hope back. Yes. that we can change the system yeah. and it's like every time we meet and every time we're sending each other articles and it's like a support network and it's like it's this incredible organization that's fighting really hard to change things for the better and I think so if anyone out there wants to know more you're in the right place because Ivers Academy yeah there's loads of stuff on the website and everything it's a big campaign but, um, that's be starting isn't there very very soon a yeah. massive massive yeah. campaign that's hopefully yeah. Yeah. In answer, someone's asked us a question, which actually I'm going to bounce to, because it's so relevant yeah. to what we're talking about now, is how we make a living, how we're making a living. And I know yeah. that you girls are probably making it from touring, right? Is that, would you say touring and merchandise? What is that? Would that Partly. be? Partly. Your... I suppose I'm a bit more half and half, because I'm a bit more on the songwriter side, like you, be. Yeah. But Twinny and Paulina are probably a bit more on the artist side, mostly. Uh, let's go, let's go around all of us yeah. and ask this question, because it's a really interesting one. Um, so myself... I'm very blessed because I've got back catalogue. Um, so obviously I've got songs that are continually earning, although it's been decimated. I'm not going to lie. When you're earning like five pound, approximately a million streams. I mean, I said this last week, um, you know, it's, you need to earn the minimum wage right now. It's 1,200,000 plays daily on YouTube to earn the minimum rate wage and 900,000 plays daily um, on Spotify, it's it's impossible. The average um, track is, you know, two hundred thousand apparently. So it, it really is. A, you've got to be very very resourceful, but rise to the challenge, people. You know, and and really have a think about what you can do. So yeah. for me, I decided to make a little sidestep into media. So um, I've been doing theme tunes. I was very blessed to have done the Mask Singer. And, and now they're using that song on the second series and they're going to release the song that we did as a single. So it's coming back round full circle. I'm also writing TV shows with music in them um, so that I can facilitate, well, it, hopefully to be able to facilitate music of my own and my friends. Um, so that's been kind of how I'm adapting. What about you, Twinny? What, what are you doing? Um... Well, I believe this is an honest space, but I earn probably yeah. now um, money from my publishing deal that I got along um, when I signed. But as a, an artist, and I think I'm quite lucky because I, you know, I have been on stage since I was four, so I've done like TV and film, and you know, I did everything in order to support my artist career. 
<laughs> like we do. <laughs> dip in, yeah. in and out with that. But as an artist, everybody else gets paid before me. Oh, so yeah. I'm not at a level. And I'm just being honest. I, yeah. I, I feel like, that you know, this is an honest chat and we know what it's like. But for people that are not watching, like I've got an album out. I probably, you know, you I've got to recoup or whatever. But that's not that you know it's really hard in the beginning i would say mm -hmm. so i do rely on like brand deals and um i don't know gigs obviously but when i do gigs it depends what it is because then i have to pay my band and stuff like that but i've been very very lucky to have been on quite a few su support tours where um yeah i've earned a little bit but not much so it's mainly my publishing deal and other stuff at the minute until and make it break it. It's you will. You will have your moment. <laughs> I was telling these guys um, yesterday that um, when we were doing a the test run, that um, you know, one of my the song that went on to win a Grammy for me and was fourteen or fourteen, fifteen weeks number one in America. Um, it was released numerous times and <laughs> years later that it actually it actually was released in England, didn't do anything, then went to America a few years later, did really well, and then was re-released back in England. So it, sometimes you just don't know it can come back round. If a, a song will have the life that it's destined to, to have. Yeah. Um, and oh, I was going to go back to something else that we said earlier on as well, which was, um, you know, sometimes, you know, we don't like songs and we write them. I have to say that I've, I've, a couple of my big hits have been ones that I didn't particularly like. <laughs> I know I'm being dead serious. Yeah. And I've yeah. been shocked. I remember when, a, I'm not going to say who, but a certain artist label rang me up and said, we're releasing this. Blah, blah. And I was like, really? You're not going to take the other one? Because I love the other one. And I, was, I, was, I was sitting in the room, ironically, with my publisher at the time. And I was like almost having this fight. You sure you're not going to take the other one? And my publisher just went to me, why are you fighting with them? Just let them take what they want. And I was like, okay. You know what I mean? Though? It's... it's and have any of you like released songs that you've not really particularly loved and they've done well? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody does. But also what I find interesting when I was making this record and you know, you have an A&R guy. I love my A&R guy. But we do, we're, you know, we see things differently quite a lot of the time. Where there's conflict, I feel like people care. But I, I argued with him so much about this one song. <laughs> and he was like, no. And I said, listen, if I put this song on that I don't like, if it's a hit, I have to sing it forever and I will hit it. So it's not up there. <laughs> and that was the end of the argument. So for yeah. your own stuff, I feel like you've got to be very, you've got to love what you do. But you know, when you write in, you write them songs and it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's a hit. <laughs> okay, we're getting some yeah. questions coming in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick some and like throw them at people in a, in a really nice sort of way. Um, how, okay, Fiona, this one's great for you. Do you have any advice for live streaming, especially to those who are nervous about being that up close and personal from Stephanie? Well, in a way, it's a very safe space to do a very intimate, up close, personal gig. I mean, there's nothing more scary in the whole world than like playing a song to one person. But if you can do a live stream, even if there are like five people watching, in a way, well, I mean, you just got to do it to learn, I think. Like anything, um, I would recommend reading some articles about using some technology behind the scenes like OBS, which lets you stream a little bit higher quality. But then again, there's literally nothing wrong with shoving your phone in front of your face and playing a song, singing and playing like guitar or piano or something. Because people will, if the song's really good and your performance is good, people will love it and then they'll spread the word. And I don't know, I just think, crack on and do it and you'll learn as you go. I mean, you know, we we started doing these, I guess, was it five weeks ago we went into lockdown? Yeah. Something like five, six weeks ago. And you know, when I look back on the first ones, I literally had never done a live stream. I've never even spoken to camera on Instagram, like, hey guys, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> now you've got a so, lot <laughs> and you're loud. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you know, but we've all been like reading a lot about the technology and things like that as we've been going along. And also just by doing it, you suddenly realize, oh, okay, I need to be able to see the comments as we go, because actually it's really important when people go, oh, can you play this song? Or like, um, you know, I'm on my own in Hull or whatever. And then you go, okay, hey, like, 
you know, I don't know, it's that connection is actually really important. So I need we literally like we learn something. Oh, thank you. I'll say it on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it on Saturday. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, question you. for you, Fee, is, you know, our, when we're out of lockdown, is your uh, venue um, able, can we hire it? Yeah, I was going to say, oh, is yeah. it for hire? <laughs> well, well, do you know what? 100%. You, you yeah, 100%. And then do gigs yeah. from there. And do, like, well, yeah. Fantastic. Get, so, as soon as, so this is our plan, okay. So as soon as lockdown eases a bit and we're allowed to congregate in little small groups or like see a couple of friends or whatever, we're going to get people around and do sessions for them because now we've got this amazing, you know, we've got a moving camera We've got studio sound. So we're basically making a TV show. I mean, who knew this Fantastic. was going to happen like six weeks? <laughs> but, you know, so as soon as we're allowed to see some friends and other artists that we know and love, we're going to be getting people around and live streaming to their Facebook pages or their, you know, wherever, whichever platform they want to stream to. Fiona, you do so, really yeah. next week, Polina and Twinny will have fairy lights all over their city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everyone else. Sure. Live venues in their rooms. In fact, yeah. uh, as we're speaking, yeah. I'm doing mine right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Polina, yeah. I've got a question for you here. Um, we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier on. But, you know, when you're having difficulty writing songs and you're having negative self-doubts, what do you do? How are you able to distance yourself from these thoughts? And um, that's from Lauren. She's loving our chat. Oh, gosh, this is hard. I think, you know, um, I think the more you're, you're in it, you realize sometimes you just sometimes just have a bad day in a studio and you just it's just a, a, a bad writing day and but in my experience some of my sort of biggest songs I've I've written when on some of my worst days of my life to be honest because uh for example the Eminem song um Legacy that I ended up featuring on I um had a session scheduled with a new writer I was fighting with my boyfriend then and I was walking on the way to the studio in tears literally and I was like well I can't show up looking like that he's, he's gonna think I'm, I'm psycho and <laughs> and literally I was on the verge of cancelling the session and I had a little tiny room and in, in you know this big studio that I was renting uh, where I produced my own vocals and stuff so and he came and he, he could he could kind of David it my who ended up being my co-writer on Legacy of Eminem he kind of thought that something was up with me so we ended up just talking and it was like my first moment meeting this person i've never met him in my life and i here i am telling him my most you know he you know no one else knew the story it's like so i ended up basically he ended up being my analytic for that for that few hours and we put it into a song so so sometimes you have to force you kind of have to force yourself i've realized you know it's like they say uh, appetite comes when you eat sometimes you don't want to go to studio sometimes you don't feel like it or you're like feeling a little low or you're like we also put so much pressure on ourselves as artists and songwriters I feel like okay we haven't had a hit this year or we're not getting the stream numbers and again it's kind of going back to the fact it's it's really every day that counts and that's what success is I think for me I'm starting to try to think in that sense that you know uh, there's that success, the outside success, but there's also internal success. It's, it's actually living that life every day. And for you guys, like I'm, I for me touring, I enjoy the process of creating a song in the studio. For me, that's like the most joy is producing it. And for me, touring has always been a bit harder. But I've always admired guys like you that tour, and it's not you know when you're starting out, it's not luxurious. Um, so I think it's just kind of like giving yourself some, pro you know, sometimes praise, like, you know, like, yes, I'm doing it and like stopping and thanking yourself. Cause I don't think we do that enough because we're so like thinking about like, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that, or I don't have this, you know, and it's this pressure thing that we put ourselves. So I think, I think don't you, think, though, you have to have bad days. do you think, Pauline, okay. though, that I think, I think it's really important as a songwriter to know this is that there are different types of songs. And some days you are gonna write a gooey, whatever, complete out and out pop song, if you're a job being songwriter, that's what's gonna happen. But then there are the other days that you are gonna, you know, I, I've mentioned this before, you know, I had a song with them um, above and beyond called Counting Down the Days. And I literally poured my heart out in that song because I'd been counting down on the calendar how many days since the guy I loved had said that he loved me. And it was a real, Tr like a true moment and stuff so I think there are those ones and sometimes it's harder 
to work through those moments when you, sometimes they're easier because you just go blah into this song. And then other times it's like the pain of experiencing that pain and, and being cathartic with it. And I'm sure we, we've all kind of been through that. I'm trying to get through some of these other questions as well, guys. I think it seems to be like one main question is they really, really want to know. And there's a few that I'm going to answer in one go here, which is how do we get from being in our bedrooms? We've all been there wanting to have a career. How do we make that step out, out and get our into camps? How do we get them to artists? Someone said, how do you sell your songs? We, you don't actually, it doesn't work like that. You don't really sell them unless it's a hip hop beat. Um, how, how do we move into that next bracket? Fiona, how do you move into that next section? Well, I'd say if you want to be an artist, the first step is really work on your singing and your playing, keep learning, learn covers, keep writing do it every day, but then also just go to find your local open mic night. You know, all my early contacts and some of the best friends I still have are from those open mic nights where, you know, you'd sit there from 7 p.m. and you'd finally play your song at 11 p.m. or whatever, but you, it was amazing. And then you slowly, from doing that, you get more confidence, you see what works and what doesn't work. And then eventually, you know, some promoter will spot you and they'll give you a, a proper slot and then you'll get paid gigs and you just go up and up slowly like that and as a songwriter if you don't want to be an artist and you want to be a songwriter I'd say write a song every day even if it's a crap one just do it work out how to finish a song um, work out how to make a demo because all of these things are at our fingertips now it's so different to how it was 20 years ago it's astonishing um, but my main, and you know, I'd also say reach out to your existing network for advice and support because um, everybody's in it together. So if you want to learn, so it's just about keeping doing it really and read about it and just, just don't make any excuses, just crack on and do it. That's I think what, be, what you touched on there, um, Fiona, is really important. Networking events. The Ivers host many, many networking events, as do PRS, ASCAP, um, BMI all around in different countries everywhere you know you have to you have to go out there and look for these things and find them tall you do a massive one um you know obviously we can't do this right now we're in lockdown but there are events like these that we can we can get involved yeah. in um and and by there I mean myself that's how I got into the game and that's how I moved my career on further was by going to networking events. It's a simple thing. You, you go on the road, you do crap gigs um, and you meet other bands <laughs> on crap gigs. And it, there is no short, I mean, there's a, there's a handful of people in this world that get to fast track, but the reality is for the rest of us, it's not like that, you know, and, and, and I'm going to touch in on a few questions here because um, we've got 10 minutes left. So I'm going to do quick fire on these guys and shoot them at you. But I would say this as a woman, and I don't mean to say that in a thing. I mean, we do have women are slightly, it's a little bit of a different trodden path to men, I think in some ways. I oh, it's a more difficult. It's just a different trodden path. And I think also, um, you know, we do get age issues as well. That's definitely, we're being asked about, about that. And I know, Twinny, you've experienced that and you're young and you, you've had that recently about Radio 1, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, wonder about the diversity. I mean, like the uh, somebody you know in my record label, and uh, somebody else was like, I, I mean, I don't make really music for radio, but someone said, Oh, well, it's for teeny boppers and 16 year olds, you're not gonna get on that. And you know, the industry or who you're with kind of put you in a bracket. I think I just wanted to touch on what you said, Fee, about being an artist and a songwriter. I think it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. What I would say is like networking, that's quite hard for a lot of people. I know people that are not like that. So be resourceful and use, use technology. Like I've reached out to so many artists and songwriters and commented. You know, it's so easy nowadays to do that. Do your gigs on YouTube, perfect it, and then post it, and then send it. Like, I think there's different routes. It's, it's, it's harder these days, but it also I think it's a lot easier with what you've actually got 
for it, it, at your fingertips it's so easy to connect with people and as an artist i would just say you have to be resilient and the songwriter you have to persevere i think that i look at the people that keep going and lizzo said you know she wanted to quit 2016 she wrote truth hurts or whatever and only now it's it's a hit which you said v about one of your songs so i just think if you're passionate about it because if it is hard it's a hard industry to be in and it'll rip you apart and it'll put you back together all in like a minute but you just have to keep you know being resourceful and speaking to people and your network and keep going so but regarding the age thing I'm a, f a big believer in music. Good music will always find its root. I only ever believe in two good, you know, music, types of music, good or bad. So it doesn't matter what genre because people listen to what they want on the Spotify now. Um, yeah, I mean, it is bulls. Bull. Sorry, no, it's kind of sad. Sorry, it's too good. <laughs> Um, but it is, it, it is BS and we, it, we deal with it in different ways. But I think, again, just keep going. You, you, you've just got to knock down them doors and eventually one of them is going to open. That's why it's so important to just keep doing your thing and keep going. Absolutely. Oh, that is great advice. Just keep, keep pushing away. We've got a lot of questions here. Let's just try and get to them. Fiona, um, quite a few on this one. How do we get to publishers? How do we look attractive as a songwriter? What, what kind of things do we need to, to do there to help our career? How do we stand out to get a deal? Well, I would say keep, so keep writing songs, get better and better and learn. And then when you're ready, you know, make demos of your songs, even if they're very simple, but make them good quality simple but good quality even if it's just literally a piano and a vocal and then send you know a couple of your best songs and if you're not a singer go out and find an amazing singer that's what naughty boy did with emily sande he went and found her at an open mic night they became really good friends started writing together so it's like so identify the part of your process that you can't do on your own and find that person if you're not a lyricist go out there and find a lyricist find Go find a, someone who's writing poetry on the internet. Um, and now that's a wise, wise words there. If you're not good at making beats, I wasn't. Find someone who can make incredible tracks. Great, great point, Fiona. And and I suppose you know publishers want to make money, so they want to see activity around the work. So it's like you're not going to get a publishing deal if if your song isn't out and nobody cares about it and nobody's, you know. But if you say you've got your artist friend to release a couple of your songs and then they're doing really well and their shows are getting bigger and bigger and they're maybe getting some radio play and things are, so you need a buzz around it. So whether that's yourself or someone else, you've got to, you've got to show that it's like happening and it's exciting because people just want to be involved in exciting, cool projects that get their juices flowing, you know? So, and also, <laughs> so just make it think, exciting. Yeah. Also just to touch yeah. on a couple of things here, you know, it's like, I'm now vocal producing and I'm, I'm not bad at it. I, I don't even mind saying that. It's been a really yeah. steep, slow curve of three to four years of learning how to use Logic and Melodyne, which I, is my go-to thing. And, but I would say to you this, as people, you know, take the initiative yourself, get GarageBand, get Logic. And I mean, even with the Ivers, I don't know if you know, but we offer a discount um, with Apple stores. So, I mean, take advantage of that. And, um, and just get started. Day one is day one. You never know in a year where you're going to be. I mean, look, six weeks later, there's a live venue in Fiona's bedroom. In <laughs> I would yeah. say um, that. Paulina, quick question. Do you feel it's important to have a good A&R or, or someone around you to negotiate or solve creative conflicts? Um, and I think that could be in the room if you've got a conflict with a producer or with a label obviously that could be the legal side what do you think on both sides of that to cover both sides of that question um it's it's always a really important thing to have a um, a team and i think also in terms of shopping your your songs as well you know i mean some of the biggest things i've had i've got have, have not would not have happened without a manager or but i've also had deals that have gone so long and so wrong and i i personally would have to call in like when lawyers would be giving up and the deal is at the end of you know at the verge of breaking basically i would have to just call in myself artist to artist and sort it out myself so i've always been maybe a bit too i'm there are artists that are kind of like 
just do their art and I've always been kind of more savvy on the, on the business side and it's, it's been a good thing and a bad thing in, in some ways because I think sometimes I get in a way of it gets in a way of being just an, art, an artist but I, I also want to add to the to the question that uh, some of the younger you know songwriters have I think it's self resource uh, resourcefulness is very important right now I think all the A&Rs and labels love it when you can cut your own, they get really excited, especially if it's a girl. Uh, if she can cut her vocals, she can produce, she can, I think for me, like, cause I got it into it through doing features on, uh, in a electronic dance world. What helped me is that I had a little tiny studio in New York inside of a big studio and I was cutting my own vocals. Um, that studio had a lot of writers go through. I think collaboration is so important in the, at the early stage of the career because you meet people, you never know. I think getting yourself in rooms, with the right people because you never know the writer you're writing with might end up having a big record and then i think having finding those people you really click with i think early on and collaboration i think is really key and so if you want to get the, the publishing deal is what you want i think that's one of the ways as a songwriter is like you have to collaborate and, and get to know people get to know your you know um the community so, you know, ladies, I can't believe this hour is nearly gone. I mean, it's gone, like, it goes fast, doesn't it? <laughs> I wish I yeah. could just sit and chat to you guys for so much longer. There's one question, and I'm sorry for the people who um, we didn't get around to their questions, but please join us next week at 11 a.m. and we'll maybe try and tackle those. And we're trying to have a few different things every week. Next week, we've got Mark Sylvan, who's got probably about 40 shows on TV who also crosses over into sync. He's got pointless and stuff like that. And then, and I did the mass singer with him. We've got Joe Killington, who was a dustman who uh, is now absolutely killing it in the studio and getting massive cuts and in the nicest guy. I, I work with him quite a lot. And also Sam Brennan, who's currently enjoying a top, uh, you know, top 40 song on, on BBC radio one chart. But there's one one's answer question thing I, I thought we could end with, which is um, that spark of inspiration, ladies. When you've got a spark of inspiration, what do you do with it? How do you how do you make it go, Fiona? Go on. And thank you. Well, I, <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I mean, I um I try and make a quick voice note on my phone, even if I look like a crazy person while I'm walking down the street. Um, I always write things down in a notebook or like on my phone. Um, but then I take time afterwards to look back through my voice notes and make sure and go, is there a seed of an idea there and see if I can actually grow it into an actual song. So it's not just that moment of inspiration, it's then the craft and the graft to make it into a finished song that's really good, you know. What about you, Twinny? Um, just, this is my biggest asset. Like, like I'll be like, <laughs> even at <laughs> night. And then I'll listen to it and I'll be like, oh, that is awful. Um, but yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's it, really. I, lo I love that, because last week I did say to them, I had thought I had a hit, and I was like, yeah, yeah. so the next morning it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there's just one question that uh, Lara Gibson, she was just asking about the age thing, saying, do you think you will ever see an older artist break through for the first time? Can you imagine a grey-haired lady breaking through? And I'm not saying for the first time, but Tanya Tucker, who was 75 oh. years old, just won a Grammy last year. So Claudia never, Brandt. Give, Claudia Brandt, oh, Latin Grammy. Never give up. What about Claudia Brandt, Latin Grammy? Oh, yeah. She's 50. So don't give up, ladies. And yes, it is. It is. You know, what was it? 4% of women in the music business uh, were charting. It was a, a, a crazy, not that we're hating on men because we're not at all. We love working with them. They're amazing artists out there. We just like to get on the radio a bit more ourselves. <laughs> but, uh, finally, come on. What was, if you've got this bit of inspiration, this spark, what do you do with it? Oh my God, I'm the person that on the plane will always be sitting there and people look at me like I'm crazy. I'll go into the bathroom and sing my parts and try to make sense of it. Or like, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you dream. Sometimes it comes to you in a dream and you're like, fuck, what was this? And you wake up and you're like, oh, it was the be the biggest, the best song I've ever written. <laughs> I don't know. I think for me, again, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> um, for me, I think it's also just, I think, you know, you have to understand, I think for me, you have to be an overall cultured person. I think sometimes it's just, just you do music and it becomes, um, I think you have to like watch movies and live life sometimes. So I think that's what I'm trying to do actually. Last 
last five weeks is, is live life because I think sometimes inspiration comes from seeing an art or just getting away from the, from the music bubble. So you've I think fill it uh, up, you? you've got to fill it up. You've got to give it something. Yeah, you've you got to feed it. Feed it. That's a good word. You either feed it with words, emotions or visuals. Yeah, because we always constantly, you know, give, 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 and sometimes you have you have to also live. So I think that's like I, I this, definitely in this the, these last few weeks have reminded me that of you know you just have to also live and be a human. So uh, yeah. take it from wherever. <laughs> music whatever inspires you. music as well. I think music inspires other music. That's true. Sure. That's very yeah. true. Yeah. So very quickly, ladies, just to go out. Twenty. Have you got your CD there? Please go check out Twinnie. I love, I love how you plug, plug my album. Um, you will not be disappointed. Hollywood Gypsy by Twinnie. Thank you. Yeah, no. What's you, you got yours? I bet she has. I've got, actually, I have got it. Yay! I've been oh, that's there you go. That Wild Angel Sweet oh. Demons. And, and I suppose, yeah, and tune in on Saturdays at 6pm UK time for these amazing live streams crazy creations we're doing oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. i've oh, got a new music that's... video coming out today oh a new music video oh. called superhero coming out today so that where, where, where is that on where do we uh, find YouTube. that youtube youtube okay. everything is 20 official and okay. i'm really easy to find because there's only one of me so. excellent and Paulina, what about you? What have you got going on? You've always got things happening. I, I, I'm ill prepared. I don't have any records here in Moscow, all of them are in LA, but I have a number one album in Russia. I have a song on, on a, an album that just came out yesterday, mm -hmm. and I have a, a duet. And oh. I'm working on a new single for Contessa, which is my indie side project. And we've been editing the videos. I'm really excited to follow Contessa World. Well, then we can see one of the other Contessa videos on YouTube. What was the one? Is yes. it the morning one I love? Video. running yeah incredible but we've been working on a, on this very interesting video that i think is really gonna be for me is, is about what we're experiencing in a way so i'm really excited about the song it's gonna be called immortals immortals and uh the video will come out in the next few weeks amazing that is amazing well thank you so much everyone for joining us ah oh, thank you it's been thank lovely to see you, you all Lovely to see you um, all. <laughs> thanks for everyone for watching. Morning. I know, probably <laughs> will all see you again. Yeah, cheers guys, cheers. Keep creating. Bye. <laughs> Bye.